Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at benchmarking. I'm going to really be looking at how I've been putting together a benchmark to try to do some comparisons between Linux distributions. So let's take a look at that right after this. I, if you've watched this channel for some time, you probably remember that I said I'm trying to find a, an, an empirical way to look at and compare and contrast the different functions of the different distributions. But, you know, the, the more I looked at it, the more difficult the problem became to solve because there's just a lot of variables that you have to take into account when you're looking at one distribution versus another. So... Today, I want to discuss a little bit about kind of a work in progress on where I'm at with this project. And uh, I'm going to pick on Ubuntu, but it isn't really intended for that. The reason I chose Ubuntu for this test isn't to compare 2110 to 2004, although you'll probably walk away with that impression. The real intent was that I have a, the opportunity with Ubuntu to test two distinctly different versions of the operating system that have different kernels, different compiler versions, different library versions. And that's a good place to go, provided both of them are being updated and maintained, and they are. So that's the reason I'm picking on this. So the question is, and the, the clickbait question is, is Linux getting faster or slower? So that's what we're going to uh, look at. And uh, really, it's more about what I chose to try to answer that question versus the actual results. So so the, the in benchmarking... <laughs> You know, that the uh, old time goal that we used to laugh about all the time is you can prove anything you want with a benchmark. It's just a matter of finding the right test to show exactly what it is you're trying to show. And if you look hard enough and long enough, you can bend the rules and, and cheat and figure out ways you can make one system look better than another. So I don't want to do that. I want to try to come up with a way that is fair and equitable that tests the things in the system that should be the same. <clears throat> So what I needed to find was a reliable means in order to compare performance of one distribution versus another. But how do you do that? I mean, there is a, and I'm going to use the Pharonix test suite, but in there, there is a set called the, uh, I think it's called the PTS server or system slash server. That thing tests everything. I mean, it, it would be, it would be every possible different configuration for a server that you can imagine from database to HTTP to mail to Kubernetes to Docker to running VMs. I mean, it's crazy. Um, but it takes four and a half days to run. I don't really want to tie up my equipment that long. I'm sorry, but I don't. <laughs> so, yeah, because if you're running a benchmark, you can only run one thing at a time. So that would, what, take eight days? Eight, nine days? Uh, yeah, if it's four and a half, yeah, nine days to complete it. Uh, no, thanks. I don't think I want to tie up my machines for that long. Besides, by the time I got to the benchmark results, you would have forgotten all about what was in the distro to begin with. So, yeah, so I need a quick method that I can compare uh, an equitable number of things between the two uh, distributions. Now, uh, so I want it to run within hours, not days or weeks. So, yeah, so but I need something that will, and the third goal is to measure a particular piece of the system that is going to be similar uh, between the distributions. That is looking at the Linux kernel. Uh, looking at the compiler, how well it performs, and looking at some of the system libraries, how well those perform, and then performance some general I.O. So, but how do I limit, how do I limit this so that I don't get into things that are specialized like graphics processors or some esoteric uh, kinds of things in the system like NUMA and all that stuff. I mean, th those are going to vary on how they're implemented by manufacturer. And I don't, I don't you know, I I, yeah, I just don't want to go there. So I want to look at things like the CPU performance, memory performance, cache memory performance, I.O. and networking, because because those are always the things, the core set of things we use every day. I mean, we you can't you can't use a machine, a computer without those functions. So those are the things that are going to be the most heavily used, the most heavily touched. So that's why I chose that. Now I have a quote at the bottom is finding a collection of synthetic workloads in order to compare Different kernel versions, compilers, and libraries, it's a path to oblivion because you'll end up in a lab sitting there all day trying to come up and going, oh, I can find something better. I found something better. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to go there either. I don't want to do that. This isn't a 
this isn't an exercise in trying to find every possible means of generating things for Linux. So, so let's go set up. I'll show you the benchmarks that I conducted. And we'll walk through some of the results and let you see some of the differences that I found. I have placed these benchmarks up on the open benchmarking website. So I'll put a link in the description so that you can find these results and, and follow along yourselves. So uh, <clears throat> this is Pharonix Test Suite. It's the latest version that I could find. And I'm comparing Ubuntu 2110 to Ubuntu 2004 the long-term release. So, yeah, at the start, it always shows you the setup. I'm trying to keep everything the same now. I noticed that some packages came in that I did not intend, but I wasn't, I was using this in uh, server mode, so. The next feature is that it shows you uh, how the compiler was configured and what options were passed when the various benchmark utilities were compiled, and they are each time you install them in the Pharonix test suite. So hopefully I managed to get about the same set of uh, variables because that can change the performance pretty pretty drastically at times. And then try to match up the disk and all that stuff, memory and processors. The next thing it kind of goes through is it'll look at each of the benchmarks that you run and then do a comparison as to who won and the percentage that it won by. So in this case, like in Cash Bench, Ubuntu 2004 was clearly faster at 145.8% faster than 2110. You have to be careful with percentages. This is one of the ways that people lie with statistics because you can you could have very small differences between them but if you're but if the number the population is small the differences could be huge in percentages so i would discount those we're going to be looking at this from the standpoint of what tests i chose so cash bench will will measure the performance of cash on the system ram speed will look at system memory and will perform different operations against it in order to determine which particular machine did better in which test. So next thing you'll see is that, yeah, you'll see a bunch of RAM speed tests and then you'll see the Apache HTTP server. I went at this at with 20 concurrent users that should give me a, a look at a system that's able to support about 2000 users, which would be a small business or, or maybe a medium sized business even. Uh, OpenSSL is a pretty good means, I think, of being able to compare uh, the processor speeds, and also take advantage of any encryption uh, that's built into the, a particular processor. So because I'm using the same processor, the, it's identical, hopefully. And But the differences might be one particular release might use it and one doesn't. It doesn't show here, but one test of OpenSSL is using SHA-256. The other one is using RSA. Uh, Postmark is designed to kind of show the operations of a mail server, the compile benchmark tries to measure I.O. performance and overall performance of the compilers, uh, how fast they can do particular operations like create, uh, read a compiled tree, and then actually compile the code. PHP benchmark does a number of tests that it performs. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to be looking at for the comparison. Then it gives you the raw numbers. But, you know, the ones in red were slower and the ones in green are faster. And then it gives, <clears throat> and then it starts to look at things like the individual uh, benchmarks themselves. So dbench, which is uh, meant to look at, uh, it's designed by the SAMA project and it's really a, a it's meant to replace NetBench. So it looks at file system calls for testing the disk performance is basically what it does. And of course, these are using similar NVMe drives, so they should be the same. Unless there's something wrong in the kernel, right? That would create a problem for one versus the other. Uh, the compile benchmark tests start here, and the first one is just the compile itself. Uh, 2110 has, is slightly faster uh, over 2004 in the test compile. Initial create, it is faster again, 2110 over 2004. The compile bench is faster on 2110. 
then 2004. And then Postmark 2110 again is the winner. And this is supposed to be how many times it can do it can do the test profiles or how quickly it can process them. And then we look at RAM speed. An integer 2110 is clearly faster. But you'll notice some things as we come through here. We'll see like the different operations, add, copy, scale. Um, and 2110 is doing really good. It's it's definitely quicker. And then the triad benchmark, it kind of and the in using integers, it kind of pulls up even, which is Kind of strange, given the fact that all the other integer operations have been so much faster, almost two to one. Uh, RAM speed, it starts to reverse. It, uh, when I get up to the average, then 2004 starts to come out on top. Again, a two to one, almost a two to one advantage. Uh, add benchmark, again, 2004 is faster. And this is time it's using the add for floating point, the copy for floating point and the scale for floating point all come out faster for 2004. Uh, yeah, the triad is faster on floating point for 2004, and also the average is faster on floating point. So clearly floating point is faster on 2004 than, than uh, yeah. Cash bench, we're looking at a huge difference here between the two, uh, the two systems. Uh, and this is using, it's part of the LLC bench, and so it's des it's designed to test memory and cache bandwidth. So that's really what you're looking at here. Same processor, the only difference is the kernel and how it's utilizing it. And then OpenSSL, uh, 2004 is slightly fast. Well, I wouldn't say slightly. It clearly is a winner there. And same with uh, the uh, other incantation. I don't know why it doesn't show which one is... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure why it's not showing, but that's okay. Um, Apache server, we see a pretty big difference there too, that 2004 is faster. And then PHP bench, um, kind of narrows the lead a little bit, but still 2004 is faster. Now, what I always do is do a geometric mean between the tests so that I can kind of compare it. It's like a stack chart. So you're looking at a way that you can empirically compare the two and so we have 2004 is definitely faster than 20 than 2110 at least in the areas that i'm measuring okay so we'll, we'll limit it to that but that's the test that i intend to use and that's what i was hoping to convey today again i'm not using this to pick on ubuntu 2110 or 21 or 2004 i'm using it to determine whether or not i have something here that i can use to compare and primarily looking at the compilers, the libraries, and the cache memory, and CPU speeds, and also the kernel. Uh, one of the things that you run into with a kernel is that, you, like I said, you can have things that are turned on in one distribution and off in another. For example, there are some big differences in App Armor and how it works between 2004 and 2110. So that could be coming into play here. Uh, how they work. And, and as you go up, there are additional security measures that are being added to the Linux kernels. Like in 5.15, there's some side channel uh, protection. So yeah, there's it is getting, those kinds of things will slow it down, even though they say it won't. I mean, the cumulative effect is all those security patches are going to slow it down. So it's a short video. I just I wanted to kick this out here and show you guys what I've been working on and get your comments on uh, if there's some tests you think I should include or if you if you believe that this is a good method to uh, use to try to compare distributions together. I know that, yes, you should do more, but every time I do more, it's going to take more time in order to get the results back. So that's I'm trying to keep this down into hours, not days and weeks. So hope you enjoyed this today. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again in the next video. Bye for now.